All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mr. McLogan and in this live stream, I want to do something a little bit different with you. So this is my third year of uh, going live with, um, with doing weekly live streams. And every Sunday night at 9 p.m., I typically answer questions um, from students just like you that are maybe watching um, and helping you out with your math. And I love taking questions from students and, you know, being able to kind of like answer questions um, for students when, you know, they need help with their math. And sometimes they need help with their math, like right as, you know, a test is coming up or they maybe haven't been in school for a while and they're coming back to math and they are, uh, you know, maybe, you know, trying to relearn some topics. So that has been one of the things where I kind of got started with doing my live streams where I just wanted to answer questions. I just wanted to be out there and helping students out. And as the live streams have kind of evolved, like I've always enjoyed like answering questions. Um, but one thing that kind of like I missed, especially, especially once I stepped away from the classroom was this idea of being able to like actually interact and um, interact with students and actually answer their questions in real time. Because obviously when you're a teacher, that's something that is like extremely like helpful and like a part of like the teaching, you know, kind of ecosystem, right? You know, you're used to like helping students out. Um, with their questions and, you know, just kind of having that like back and forth with them. And so one thing I always, you know, wanted to do is like do some private tutoring. And it was always kind of difficult because the, um, it was always difficult in, at least in like my time is like one of the reasons I stepped away from the classroom was because it, like I didn't have enough time for my family and to, to kind of expand like the YouTube, um, YouTube channel, and then also to be a teacher. So, you know, the, the fact or the idea of like adding on extra tutoring assignments was just kind of a little bit overwhelming, um, to say the least. However, one thing I realized was I, you know, I also still got, I still got like pinged a lot of times like, hey, could you tutor me? Could you help me out? And uh, it was just, you know, it was one of those things where like I wanted to do it. I wanted to help students out, but it was just not something that I could um, be able to do. But I had this idea, and if you were on my channel at the beginning of this year, where I reached out to, um, or reached out to you guys on my in the community, and I said, "Hey, would anybody like free tutoring? Like, I didn't want to offer anything for like a pay for me or anything like that. I just genuinely wanted to, you know, help some students out. And one of the part of like helping students out was I wanted to kind of record the process. I wanted to record like the journey." Um, that students were going on and I received a lot of responses and it was actually really great. It was really cool to see like where everybody was at at different times. And a lot of the students, you know, we looked at, um, I worked with a lot of students and talked with them and tried to see like who would be a good fit. And, you know, there's a couple, a couple tough times where like some students like thought they needed help, but then they ended up not needing it. Um, sometimes the schedules just didn't really match up. Um, and then sometimes the students were taking math where I was like, I'm not really like very strong in whatever math curriculum that you're taking. Like, I don't think I would be a great fit for like a tutor. Like it happens. I'm not a math genius by any means. Um, but there was a couple students that I was able to connect with. And one of those students was uh, Giselle. And I'm going to, um, you know, hopefully bring her on and just kind of let you tell her a little bit about her story and why she wanted to, you know, kind of get some tutoring. Um, because it's a little bit different than like what most students, or at least what I was thinking of students that I would uh, attract to to kind of like look into getting some um, tutoring. And um, so there there was a little bit of issue um, that we tried to get in the connection. So we'll kind of see if it works out. And if it doesn't work out, then I can definitely try to fill in as best I can um, for her. But it was um, it was really cool because we went through a couple sessions, and I um, I really got to you know, see some of the challenges that she was um, working on. And, and yeah, as you can see from the thumbnail, like she ended up passing uh, the exam that she had to take. So I'm going to, oh no, she was on here, but then she wasn't on here. So, um, hmm, I'll maybe see if she can add back on a second. Actually, let me go and see. Um, see if she can go back into the room. I was communicating with her before she was having some, a little bit of issues, um, back in from there. So, but anyways, I'll, I'll just kind of talk in if she jumps on, then I'll, then I'll go ahead and share. But so one thing that I, as you guys can see, um, what is pinned in the chat is actually that tutoring application because it was really cool. There's actually a couple students that I, I might be able to add on, um, as well, um, to kind of tell you about their kind of story and go through because the, the problem that I know from most students that are gonna see um, is that it's a recording, right? And I'm not sure if, 
you know, what actual recording I might be able to use, but I really wanted to kind of make like a little bit of YouTube video that we could actually kind of go through the kind of transformation that um, a student will go through and, you know, kind of like going through the tutoring sessions, not like recording or displaying everything that came from the tutoring sessions, um, but kind of like, you know, portions where I am providing like assistance and helping. And uh, the student is basically, you know, trying to either pass a test or passing a course um, and stuff like that. So I totally understand a lot of students don't think about that as like, oh, yeah, that's going to be such a great idea. I definitely want everybody in the whole wide world to, uh, you know, see that I was getting tutored by Mr. McLogan. But some students might be like, I don't care whatever I need to be able to do. Um, I know that I need to step out of my comfort zone or I need help. And, um, you know, it's again, my point of recording things is to really kind of like connect more with students of like overcoming any kind of like math anxiety or kind of, um, um, you know, kind of, kind of like memory loss for us on math or, um, you know, any kind of struggles in math and overcome them because that's something I talk about a lot on my channel, but it's, you know, I think it always, it can resonate a little bit better when you actually see somebody actually going through that journey and being successful. So, um, I haven't been able to create any, anything, at least I haven't done anything yet with our recordings. And so I'm not sure if I might be able to do it, but that was like my grand idea. And that's kind of like the pay to play, right? So I'm not charging anything that I, that I want, that I'm not charging anything for the tutoring. Um, but it is, it is something that, um, that I feel like is a interact, like a, a back and forth that, um, you know, hopefully for some students, it might be the, you know, worked out. So anyways, all right, Giselle is back on. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can go ahead and add her in. Otherwise I might be able to add in from some of the things that, uh, she said. So let's go ahead and see. Well, Hey special. Thank you so much for the super chat. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Let's go ahead and see. Giselle is in the, or uh, to the left. All right, but I'm not, oh, hmm. audio is not on, guess is muting themselves. All right, but she has her camera off, so I'm hopefully that might help out. But Giselle, if you're able to hear me, I have you at least on, on the split screen, but it does look like you have muted yourself. And I know you had a little bit of issues with your camera. Um, so if you are able to, if you're able to get into the audio, um, that's perfectly fine. You mute the guest. I don't want to mute the guest. Huh. Okay. Hmm. All right. Um, is the tutoring session? I'm not sure. Tucker, what you are, okay, she's joining again. Um, Tucker, what you're, what you're asking. But yeah, I mean, it's multiple tutoring sessions. That's basically what, um, what, I went, uh, what I went in with. So, all right, let's go ahead and try again. Hey, Giselle, how are you? Oh. Let me see. Do I have my audio? Oh, I turned my Hello. Uh, it's good to see you. It's good to have you on. Thank you so much for, um, again, joining on the live stream. I like, this is my first time doing any kind of like interview process. So. Um, I totally understand. I know you had some issues and if you get booted, feel free to like join the link and hop on again. Um, and if the internet is just, you know, or something else just goes out, like all cool. Like I thank you again. I just like so much appreciate you, um, joining on and being able to, you know, just kind of help out like some students. Cause like, you know, I want to, um, you to kind of tell a little bit of your, you know, kind of story, um, for whatever time, you know, that you have that, you know, why you decided that, you know, kind of joining on or hopping on for like the tutoring, you know, for me. And then also obviously you're a little bit more unique situation because you're not a, like a typical student that I would teach. So why don't you, um, you know, tell students a little bit about, you know, why you, um, were looking for tutoring and then also what the tutoring kind of meant for you. Oh yeah. Um, first of all, I, I decided to join the tutoring, I think, that was only about a month left. Oh, can you hear me well, sir? Yep. Yeah, you're good. Um, okay. Yeah, I think that was just about a month left before the exam. And I didn't really know much. I didn't uh, have much enough knowledge to for the for my major. 
I, I mean, I know math is really broad and I was so scared to, I'm not gonna, gonna have any help with that. So that's why I decided to, you know, I, I tried, I tried and I'm glad that I was, I was chosen as one of your, the lucky tooties. Yes. Awesome. Um, yeah, no, it was really cool. So, so basically on our session, so you were going for your teacher exam, right? To, um, back in teacher and it'd been a couple of years since you've been, so you kind of needed a little bit math refresher and, but you had like a really big review that we kind of worked on. Um, now I know we went through a couple sessions. I went through some questions. I helped you out with them, but in reality, like tutoring is, you know, and this is one of my, those reasons where it's like, you know, I know a lot of people, some people can pay like a ton of money for tutoring. It's not really about the tutoring. It's about the results. And on one thing that's always kind of, I've had trouble with tutoring or at least spending money on tutoring is like, I think to get the result that most students want, you still have to put in the work. And so on, you were studying for this big exam, right? And yes, we went through some questions and I'm, but I'm not going to give myself credit. Like I got myself, you know, I helped you pass it. Like, I know we, I helped you and we, we talked some things, but like you put in a lot of work. Oh no, I lost her. Um, and Giselle put in a lot of work. And the question that I'm going to propose to her, if she can um, add back on, or maybe if she even wants to join into the chat is like, what other advice does she have for students that um, were preparing or for working for their exam to prepare for that? Because when I was talking with her, it was, it was like a very high stakes um, quiz. It was a very high stakes test. And um, she had a lot of like anxiety and a lot of, um, you know, prep that she had to do for this test. And so, you know, that was one thing that I kind of put myself in position to be able to, you know, try to say, all right, you know, yeah, I can be the teacher. I can show you how to do the math problems, right. That were on your review, but showing you how to do something is, is not going to get you prepared for that test. Like she had to practice, she had to put in the work. And, uh, so that's what I'm going to try to ask her. We'll see if, you know, we can get this, um, connection back in, um, for her on that, that hopefully she can kind of add on. So for any of you students that are adding on, and then also, if you do have any questions, um, for Giselle, then please feel free to add them into the chat. Um, as she's kind of talking, I'll be more than happy to kind of add in, um, from on there. Ah, uh, should I? Ooh, especially in pre-calc is honors. Awesome. Good for you. Um, what's the highest undergrad math, you know? I don't know. Well, it's been like over 15 years since I, or 18 years since I was even in school. So, um, I probably won't remember even much for, at all from there. Uh, I'm anxious cause my pre -cog honors teacher has gone from maternity leave and returned to school last Friday. Whew, yeah, I can imagine that's kind of crazy. Um, Hey, a lot of pre-calc students. Awesome. Love the pre-calc. Uh, yes, it is a tutoring session from on there. Um, I mean, there's definitely going to be some application of math induction, um, from on there. Like as far as the difficulty, I think it's, you know, uh, I remember we did a little bit of it in the pre-calculus, um, when I was teaching for it and, but it was like very, very basic. Um, so we didn't get too much and I don't remember anything else I covered, um, from my undergrad. Okay. Um, so unfortunately... Sorry, I'm just responding to her. She's having a little bit of issues. Um, okay, so it doesn't look like she will be able to join um, back in on from there. Um, Okay. Um, but you know, there you have it there. Uh, I was like, she was having like a couple worries. I was like, Oh, if you could please, uh, just jump on. I wanted to make sure that students, you know, understand there's a couple other people that I helped out and I was like, Oh man, I, you know, you had a really interesting story. And I was like, I really want to make sure that people felt like you were real, that I wasn't kept on collecting people to saying I was, uh, you know, tutoring them and stuff like that. So um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was Giselle and, you know, through the thumbnail, she did pass, um, uh, pass her exam. So, um, I did ask her to, you know, kind of provide, you know, any other, um, 
you know, kind of advice or anything like that. And she's also like, you know, in the chat. And I didn't see if there was any, um, I uh, did any question from there. But if you have any questions, she did say, so you might, uh, you know, pop into the chat and you might be able to answer um, any other questions. Like my main thinking, it was like, you know, when you have something that's like high stakes, right? Like a T, you know, an exam or an SAT, ACT or anything like that. Like um, my, my kind of curious thing was like, because I helped her with like understanding some certain questions, but I didn't help her prepare, th prepare for that test. I did not help her, you know, overcome uh, or you're know, not overcome, but like get really, really prepared. So my only last question, you know, from her was like, you know, what else, like what else did you do that helped you be successful? And Giselle, if you wanted to record that video or if you want to type it in the chat, um, that's pretty fine. I, I really, really appreciate you jumping on, uh, from that. And dead Dom says, how much is the average tuition fee for one hour? I have no idea what the average, um, tuition fee for other people, um, for other people that tutor, but I do, um, that's why I'm offering this. Like, I don't offer this tutor tutoring as far as a, a paid tutoring, um, paid tutoring assignment. This is something that I only offer to kind of just hold on that I can be able to record. And then obviously we can like bring students back on and, you know, talk about their struggles. So therefore you guys can like answer questions and relate and stuff like that. Um, how would you say that you change as a student from high school to college? That's a great question. Um, well, I think when I was in high school, I just didn't really care. Um, what I was doing, I was really just all focused on sports. And so school is just kind of like a means to in the end, like, Hey, I just need to do this to graduate. And then once I got into college, I kind of decided like, all right, I wanted to become a math teacher. So then I kind of had like a carrot, you know, I like, here's what I'm going to do and here's how I'm going to achieve it. So I think it was like, once I was able to kind of make that decision on what I wanted to really do with my life, um, then that's where I really kind of be determine how to like work hard and like achieve, you know, achieve my degree and stuff like that. Whereas when I was in high school, I didn't care about being top of the class. I didn't care about, you know, not having the best GPA. Like I wanted to get a good enough GPA to go to college, um, and, and, uh, be eligible for my sports. And like, that was about it. So like learning, being the best or learning things like math. And it's like, I didn't care about learning math. Um, you know, like it's like, like I've talked about, like I got D's and C's on a lot of my math courses. Um, math was not a strong subject, subject of mine. And so I wasn't really like highly motivated, um, as well for that. So, so I think once I kind of knew the direction I wanted to take, um, in college, that's how I kind of became more motivated for things. What was your weakest subject in high school? My weakest subject in high school was at probably math and physics, to be honest with you. Um, no, 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 I'm sorry. I take that back. English was my weakest um, subject in high school, for sure. Uh, I was like, even though math, like I struggled with, like I kind of have like, I don't know, a little bit, I, I could get by, like I could, I could figure things out. I just, you know, a lot of times I just kind of gave up on math, you know, especially like senior year and junior year. But English is something that I struggle with all the way through. Um, I, oh, even when I was like in college, um, I struggled, you know, with that. And even if I might've got a good grade, um, even if I might've got a good, even if I might've gotten a good grade, it didn't mean like it was easy for me. Um, you know, so like there was a lot of work that, um, uh, I would have to do to, uh, like I, for instance, like my freshman year, I got an A in English class, but I probably spent like like five X more time on my English class than I did on like my math class. Like I, you know, I'd write a paper like five times in a row, like just repeating the same paper, um, to good. So definitely English was my, my weakest, um, subject. Um, well, awesome. Lucas, so happy to help you out. Um, hello, Giselle. Oh, hello, sir. Giselle here. The best advice I could give. Oh, Giselle. Oh, you're here. Best I could. Oh, this is from Giselle. Awesome. Thank you so much, Giselle. Uh, the best advice I could give uh, for somebody preparing for their test, it would be for them to know what type of learner they are. It's always hard to find where you begin. So knowing how to best learn can be a good step. And I think that's really good because that's not something I talk about really at all. I think you do got to like, you do, you do have to know your strengths. You do have to know like what makes you click. You have to know like where sometimes you get, where you struggle. Um, and I think you, I think you need to know, like, you know, how, how best to prepare for yourself. And I, and I think that's really helpful because a lot of times students are always asking me 
for like advice, like how should I do this or how should I, you know, do for that? And like, even though I'll give you an opinion of like maybe what's worked for me or what's worked for some other students in my classroom, um, if you've done something different or if that doesn't, if you know, like that doesn't work for you, like that's perfectly fine. Like you got to like, I can't remember what, um, what I was looking into. There's something else like, you know, it was like the, I, I can't remember the conversation we were having, but like, basically the answer to the question is like, whatever works for you is the right answer. Right. So, I mean, yes, there's like a lot of ways to like skin a cat, you know, as like the, um, as the phrase goes, but like, um, yeah, of course there's some best practices, but we're all different. We're all unique, you know, individuals. And so I think it is really important to kind of know like how you work best, um, how you learn. Right. And, and to, and to lean into that and not to say that you shouldn't try different techniques and try different things that people say, right. Um, because you can learn, you can expand, right. You do want to challenge yourself, but, but also don't put yourself at a disadvantage trying to fit into a mold that you are not destined to. So I really do uh, love the advice. Thank you so much Giselle for again, dropping on, and then also giving everybody a great little nugget of advice. Um, all right. Cause, uh, just it's trick hard in algebra. Who knows? Um, do you have any tips for overcoming fear in math? I am planning on pursuing a degree in computer science, but I've noticed that I visibly get anxiety when dealing with math, regardless of how much I study. You know, I do have a video about the fear in math. I'm not sure. I don't know how much like it covers, um, what you would be doing, but I think it is literally like overcoming your fear in math. So maybe I'd say, check out that video because <laughs> it literally says overcome your fear in math. But besides, um, that video, besides that video, or let me try to see if I can remember like some points from the video that I think you can take with it is, you know, a lot of times those fears come from like you having some failures, right? You getting some problems wrong, you getting a bad grade or maybe some, you know, anything like that. So I think the, I think the easiest thing you or not the easiest thing, but like one of the most important things you need to understand is like, you know, when you have that math anxiety, like I know a lot of times it's high stakes and I know a lot of times you can't, uh, you, you can't, um, avoid the high stakes tests, um, or, you know, grades that are going to come with it. I think I think with as far as the math anxiety, there's you, you have to one, like you got to keep moving forward. Okay. There's going to be hiccups. There's going to be failures. There's going to be struggles. There's going to be bad grades, but the worst thing you can do is just like, is let the anxiety take over. Because I think when you like sit and like sit there and like be frustrated about like how you did or what happened, the math anxiety just gets worse and worse. The best thing you need to do to overcome fear in math or anxiety, math anxiety is to take action, you know, figure out like, all right, I failed this test. Like, all right, I'm going to do everything possible to like review and, you know, do all the problems, all the problems on the test over again. Right. I don't understand something. All right. I'm going to find as many tutors as I possibly can that can, that can at least explain me how to be able to do something. Um, cause I think if you just kind of sit there and just like ho-hum about, you know, the anxiety or like how hard or stressful things are, then it's just going to eat you alive. You know, I mean, obviously figuratively, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that was like my main point that I drove in for that video. And I, I would definitely stand by that. Um, you know, even for like this response, like that is like one of the main things you're going to want to do. And I, I think there was a couple of other points that I made. So if you want to go, you know, check out the video, like feel free, but, um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I mean, you gotta, you gotta set yourself up for success. And one of the best ways to be prepared for mathematics is like put in a lot of time, a lot of effort, right? Practice a lot of problems. Um, and when you come up to a test and you can honestly say that like, Hey, I have done everything possible to be as well prepared as I possibly can for this test. And it's like, Hey, whatever happens is going to happen. You know, it's like, you can only do so much to get yourself prepared. And, um, you just got to understand like things are going to happen. Like you're, there's going to be the bad is going to take over. So you got to be able to frame things and phrase things and take action where it's not going to overwhelm you and that you can kind of, um, continue to move on. So hopefully that is helpful in any regard. Um, yes, math is the only one I did teach a peer counseling class my first year teaching, which was kind of weird, but, um, yeah, I, just math. Uh, do you keep old students? Um, some of them, I mean, like I'm, you know, friends with some of them on, uh, on social media. So, you know, just 
you know, Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that. So, uh, once in a while we'll, you know, connect on there, but, um, that's really, it's really about it as, you know, as things come around, uh, what's the best way to prepare out of pre-calculus next semester? Well, I don't, am not really sure where you're at, but, um, I definitely would make sure that you practice a lot with like the quadratics and polynomials, rational expressions, like fractions. I would probably say getting ready for pre-calculus. Um, I do have an are ready for, are you ready for a pre-calculus um, course that you might want to check? It's free. Um, they could go ahead and maybe get started, you know, with that and like a diagnostic test. Um, maybe go and check that out. And I think the description and everything is in the links down below. Um, if you want to go and take a look at um, from on there. Hey, Nisha, good to have you on. It's been a while. Um, hey, what's going on? I hope this new year is going great for you. It is. I am so glad I subscribed to your channel since your videos have made me feel so much more confident in math and helped me improve my grades. Well, awesome. I'm so happy to be able to hear that. Uh, yeah, I mean, just the only thing I would say as far before you get into calculus is practice, 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 practice. Okay. So there's, you're going to have a lot of opportunities and maybe you need to make more opportunities. I mean, obviously you want to review trade. You want to make sure you're good with like, you know, algebra two, but like most students struggle with, um, most students are going to struggle in calculus because of their algebra and their trig. So make sure you're reviewing all that stuff as well. Um, I don't know. I mean, I like trig, so. I would say it's a little bit easier for me than sometimes some algebra problems, but you know, d it depends on what you're like, typically you're going to take a tr class in trig after you're going to take a class in algebra, but obviously you can have some really, really hard algebra problems and some really easy trick problems. And you could also have some really hard trick problems with some really easy algebra problems. So it's kind of a, not really sure. Like they're not really great comparable, um, content from on there, I would say. Um, is is geometry over the summer hard? I'm going in my school. It costs four hundred and it's five week long. It's almost five hours each day. I don't like it to be honest with you. Um, I know that for some students, taking a a a course over the summer is like is what they need um, for whatever their schedule or for their you know courses stuff like that. But I mean, unless there's a really big need for you to have to do it, like, and again, especially if you're asking the question, is it hard to me that kind of, that makes me hesitate that you might not be prepared for that course. And if you're not going to be prepared for geometry over the summer, it just, to me, just sounds like it's going to be, um, not a good gig. That's got a lot of money. Right. And it's probably gonna be a lot of stress and you might not do as well as you are hoping for. Um, I think a lot of times we do, you know, push students a little bit too hard, um, to learn information on such a quick, quick understanding. They don't really develop the true understanding or the deep understanding that they need. Um, taking summer courses or taking like abbreviated courses is okay for many students, but I think probably for more students, allowing that opportunity for you to like digest and understand the material and review it is better. Um, so yeah, I, if, if you feel all confident in your math abilities, um, or it's really something that you really need to like knock out that credit over that summer and you're willing to put in the work, um, because it's a lot, it's over the summer. Right. And so like five hours every day, plus homework and studying, like it's, that's going to be a lot, a lot, lot. And, but if that's something you're willing to do, that's something you need to do. Um, then I'd say, yeah, I mean, go for it. Right. But if it's just something you're doing just because, or to like join in with, you know, compete with some other students, like I would definitely say, no, don't do it. Like it's not worth it. Um, I would say, enjoy your summer <laughs> and there, you know, math is not a race. There's no need to, um, just take a course just to make sure that you can take this, you know, calculus by your senior year. Like it, like it, 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 in my opinion, I've seen way more students get burned in that idea of like, let me take as much math as I possibly can as fast as possible. And then they get caught because they don't really learn the information. The grades start to slip or they realize they spent so much time studying, you know, they lost out on other opportunities um, that came their way compared to students that really are set up to take advantage of like an accelerated system. So that's my, you know, kind of two cents. And again, it really all depends. I would highly recommend not taking really my advice but speaking with your parents, your counselor, and your math teacher, those are the three people that really should um, um, 
those are three people that really should help you decide what's the best for you. But you can always take, you know, take mine as a grain of salt. Um, all right, let's see. What are the questions? I can't find any vids on your channel about Angular and Linear. Yeah, I don't really have any. I mean, that's more, and I saw your question, Arab. I, I don't even think I covered anything. I'd have to like go back and review it. So um, yeah, I don't have, that's just not something we covered. I know it's a lot in some pre-calculus textbooks and obviously in physics, but it's just not something that I really covered um, a lot. So I'd, it'd have to be something I'd go back and review because um, we never really covered it in my curriculum. Uh, well, I taught pre-calculus the most and probably pre-calculus or calculus would probably be my two favorite. Um, I'm just going to kind of like end this one again too. Like, like it, it, it's so dependent on like everything else of, of other, so many things that I have no idea about. So I would just highly recommend talking to your parents, your math teacher, maybe your future math teacher and your guidance counselor to kind of determine like what is the best course of pace for you. Because, you know, one student, like, you know, student asked at the beginning of the stream, like, how, you know, how was your different, um, like, how were different student were you in high school compared to college? Well, in high school, I didn't really care. <laughs> so I didn't really put in the effort. In college, though, I was much better and stronger because I had a, I had a vision. I knew what I wanted to do, right? I need to, and so I think when you're speaking with your parents or counselor and your math teacher, you're like, all right, here's the math. Here's the track I want to go with. And if, like, that's where you agree and that's where you know you want to go then like, go, boom, pursue it, right? But maybe it might be something you're not really sure about. You're not, And then maybe stepping back might be the better idea for you. So there's all those things that I have no idea about. So that's why it just doesn't make sense for me to um, provide like advice um, technically on that. All right. Well, hey, Rasmus. Is it just me or the audio quality? Is it bad? I don't know. Anybody else have bad audio quality from me? Hopefully not. I have my microphone right here, but maybe maybe it is. I don't know. Hopefully not. Um, it is, but most likely students I see, um, I don't see that very common. But I mean, of course it is. Depends on why you got, you know, why'd you struggle in pre-calculus? Was it be you struggle in pre-calculus because maybe your teacher might have been like maybe a little bit more like hard? Right, and you maybe weren't prepared for it. Maybe you didn't apply yourself as much, uh, but you could understand the curriculum, understood the content, um, you know, or uh, or maybe it was just some of the topics that your teacher taught, like you didn't do well on, uh, but they're not always applicable directly with calculus. So I think it depends, but I think overall a lot of the concepts that we teach in pre-calculus are there to prepare you for calculus. So in general, if you're going to be successful in calculus, you want to be successful in pre-calculus. Uh, well, P is going to be the constant and Q is going to be the coefficient of the polynomial. Yeah, I can definitely see, you know, moving a lot for sure. I have an exam in a week. Please help me. I need tips for my finals. Um, just go back and look at my channel. I have a whole bunch of couple videos on um, tips, um, tips for getting ready for your channel. Awesome though, man. Congrats. Um, I thought I saw Renee. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, all right. So one thing I also want to do, I'm going to post a channel. I'm going to post a, I'm going to post a, um, a, whatchamacallit. I am going to post a, um, a poll on my channel, probably tonight or tomorrow. Okay asking you guys um, about my Q&A. So I want to start doing some different things on the live streams like I did tonight with having Giselle on and doing that with like either some, you know, also some other people um, as well. And, but then also like just talking about some different topics and stuff like that and probably like cutting less into time for Q&A. So what that brings to me is what should I do with my Q and A? So typically at this point, I would usually transition over to answering questions for you guys um, on the Q and A. And from on the Q and A, you guys would go ahead and post your questions. And let's see, where did my, where did they go? Um, there you go. Where you guys can now post a question at brianmcgillogan.com forward slash Q and A. And this was for the math questions. Now I love doing the math questions and I'm gonna continue doing the tutoring 
um, for the free tutoring, which again, like also I totally forgot. I got to give a plug for that. So if you would be interested in being um, on the tutoring, then also go ahead and check out the, um, I think I saw the pin. Yeah. So the free tutoring, it's in the description, right? Or it's in the chat. It's in the live chat. Like go and check it out. It's in the description as well. Like if you would like to have tutoring, it does not, I do not charge anything for my private tutoring, but I do um, require that you be on camera and that it's recorded and that it could possibly be made into a um, kind of YouTube video, just going through the journey, not like, not just like a, a recording of all of our sessions and then uploaded, like it would be something that'd be edited uh, to be posted. So if that is something that would be of interest to you, then feel free to go ahead and check out the link. Again, it's in the chat. Um, if you do have math questions, like right now I have brianmcgluing.com forward slash Q&A. And I love that, right? Students go on there and they submit questions and I answer them. However, I'm not really sure if these live streams are the best place to put them anymore. Um, so, so yeah, uh, you know, let me know in the chat. We all look at them from now. And let me know if that's where you guys would like to do the Q&A. Like, do you think it's like a good transition to you know, talk and then do some math questions. Um, I do have some other math channels that uh, I could do the Q and A on. Um, I could do them in the members only um, kind of post. I'm just not really sure what I'm gonna do. So yeah, so I don't know. Um, let me know on there. Cause I was, you know, a couple options I'm thinking in is just to maybe do it on the members only. Um, that I have, cause that is like growing on my channel. So I do want to kind of offer like some extra, you know, perks in that regard. Um, I'm also thinking about maybe as far as on the members only, um, you know, doing in that and doing in there or, or also maybe doing it on like my other channel. So therefore I was students, like I always like also having like the free version where students can always post questions, you know, to me and not feel like, Oh, I have to like, you know, donate or, you know, support Mr. McLogan on YouTube. So I always do feel like having a free option, even though I can't answer everybody's question. Like I think always having that free option is something that's kind of helpful. Uh, maybe I can offer an extra live stream. I don't know. Maybe I'll do that on like Fridays. I don't know. That's another op op that's another idea I've kind of thought about. Like maybe at the end of the week, just doing like a live stream on my channel, or maybe a different channel. Um, going from on there. So I don't know. Let me know in the chat. I'll I'll look at them. Any any kind of thoughts or anything you guys have? Um, I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, I know this is kind of stupid, but I'm only in, oh, I'm going to drop this cause I don't, uh, yeah, if, I'm not going to answer too many questions. So, but let me pop that off. I know this is kind of stupid, but I'm only in grade nine and I can't stop thinking about what career I want to pursue. Don't worry about it. But I know I definitely want to do some type of engineering. Do you have any tips? Just try to try to experiment with as many different things as possible. And it'll eventually come, you know, you, you might, you might change your career 10 or 20 times. Like, just keep trying new things and, you know, treat going down paths that you enjoy, that you want to explore and just be, just be able, ready to pivot when you kind of have that feeling of it's time to pivot. Okay. Uh, doing so bad in 21. Uh, oh yeah, one of the hardest things about education was the mathematical side of things. I found it extremely difficult because one school we would be discussing projects. The next one would be probably something else. Uh, I think of some kind of learning disability regarding math. I've struggled with it since kindergarten and now I'm in high school, junior, and nothing has changed. Um, yeah, I mean, it definitely could be, right? I believe it is like medically di di diagnosed like dyscalculia. Um, you know, there's come out, there could be some other maybe learning disabilities that could be infecting or infecting, impacting like your ability to understand and learn and digest the mathematics. Um, but um, so yeah, you know, it's, um, yeah, it definitely could be. I think also like, Maybe, maybe also some of the ways that like you're approaching it might not be working. So maybe look at some different ways that you could be doing things. I'm not saying like to, you know, just some things to, like try and like experiment with. Um, hey, Gabe, good to have you on. How are you? Can you explain the multiplicity of two of a polynomial graphs? Uh, I mean, best thing to put in the question, like the best thing with the, poly the multiplicity is just going to tell you like multiplicity of two just means it's going to look like a quadratic. It's going to bounce. Okay. So it's a repeated zero one. So it's going to touch at the Y axis, but it's going to reflect back up. So it's going to go up, boom, or it could go down and are up and down. 
That's a great question. I think about that all the time. Like, what would I be doing if I never became a teacher or if I quit teaching before like YouTube wasn't around? Um, you know, I used to drive, I used to be like in construction. So I used to do like drive heavy equipment. Um, that might be something I would do. I always love like architecture and like designing stuff. Um, so that might be something I would have done. I don't know. It's like a, it's, it's like one of those weird things you're like, man, what would my life turn out like if I didn't want to be, if I didn't a teacher? I don't know. It's a good question. Um, all right. So let's, um, let's get into some math. So I have my live stream up. Oh no, I forgot. Dang it. Um, I, I had a, my, I, since I changed my studio, like over to this end, um, I forgot to put my second monitor up. So I have to turn off all this stuff. Crap. All right. Well, good thing. I only have a couple of questions that I'm going to go with you guys. Um, so let's go ahead and switch that on. Let's see. Dang it. This is so annoying. I guess I can see it from here, right? Okay. So I can still see from on there. The only thing that stinks is I can't see your, let me see if I can get your, um, <sighs> hmm. Let's see if I can get your comments. There you go. All right, cool. All right, now at least you hear your comments so I believe can say, hey, to you guys. There we go. Perfect. All right. But you guys can't see that one. All right. Perfect. All right. Cool. So now at least when you, cause the reason why I want to see your comments is because then I can obviously I can be like, um, like, Hey, frequent. Ah, oh, that's not what I was trying to do. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to that. Why does that do that? That's so weird. Oh, okay. Let's get out of the, that's right. Um, there you go. Okay. But now I can be like, Hey, freaking frogs. Perfect. All right, cool. Okay. Um, that's still kind of acting weird. <laughs> well, happy, happy to be able to help you out, Reed. All right. Th this is now annoying because now when I click on that, oh, it's so annoying. Okay. Now, when I click on that, though, it just takes me back. Oh, that's so stupid. All right. All right. So what we'll do is, sorry, guys, I got to answer these questions and then we'll go from there. Um, and again, so if anyways, if you joined on this live stream and you're interested in me tutoring, it's free. Um, go ahead and check out the link that's in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and then otherwise, I will. Uh, um, otherwise, yeah, I'll uh, I'll be posting something in on the, on the live stream about my Q&A. All right, so let's go and get into these couple questions. Happy to be able to help you out, James. Um, given the line y equals negative two x plus three, find the equation of the perpendicular line that passes through the point negative two, negative five, in slope better set form. Okay, cool. So we have the x and we have a y point. Okay. Now this is in y is equal to a mx plus b, which is our slope intercept form. All right, so we have a perpendicular line. Okay, what we need to understand is perpendicular lines have what we call opposite reciprocal slopes. Okay, so if we were just to kind of look at a general idea of like an x, y axis, and let's go ahead and pick like a line that looks like this, and then let's do one that's perpendicular like that. Okay, now a couple of things I want you to kind of understand about these slopes, all right, is first of all, like look at the slope triangle here. This slope is positive, positive, right? But if I was going to do like a slope triangle, I don't know, for over here. Okay. What I'd hear is a, if I was going to go from like, uh, actually go from right to left, positive, negative. So what that means is this is a negative slope. This is a positive slope, right? So we have one line that's positive, has a positive slope. One slope has a negative slope. So that's what we call the, um, opposite signs. So the slopes are opposite. And then also what I want you to recognize here is that the slopes are what we call reciprocals of each other. Like if this was like, I don't know, up three over two, 
Well, then this would be over two, down three. Okay. Again, I'm just making up these numbers, but I want you to see like that's the relationship of perpendicular lines. The reason why that's important is because my M in this case is equal to a negative two. Now, how do you find the reciprocal of a negative two? Well, remember, negative two can be rewritten as a negative two over one. Right? So my new, so this is like the old. Right? So for my new equation, though, so let's put the new equation down here. My M is going to equal to a positive one half. Why? Because it has to be the opposite sign, right? One's negative, then this one's positive. It has to be the reciprocal. If this is negative two over one, then this has to be one over two. Um, so we have the slope, and then also we have the point x, y, right? So it has to go through this point, a negative two, negative five. All right, so I'm not really sure. Um, and if it was, that's for perpendicular. And then it says the equation of the parallel line. Well, the parallel line has to have the same slope, right? So that's going to be m is equal to a negative 2. And then it's also going to be point through negative 2, negative 5. Okay, so this is an xy, and that's going to be an xy. All right, so how do we find how do we find the equation? Well, the way to find the equation, what we're going to want to do here is use, um, there's a couple different ways. You can use point slope form, or you can actually use the slope intercept form. In this equation, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my point slope form. So what I can have is y1, um, or sorry. Yeah, let's see if I can, y1 minus y is equal to an m times a x minus, or x1 minus x. Do I really wanna use the y? No, let's switch those around actually. It doesn't really matter how you're labeling them. Let's do these as x1 and y1, okay? It does not really matter. You can rearrange them the way that I had them. That's perfectly fine. The reason why I'm just going to have this as here, like I'm going to label this as x1, but I'm going to call this like x1 and y1, okay? So then basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace in my x1 for negative 2, y1 for negative 5, and my m for a 1 and 1 half. So therefore, I will now have a y minus a x1, which is a negative 2, equal to an m, which is 1 half, times an x, oh crap, that's not the y. <laughs> that's x1, right? So this is negative five. Equal to a negative one half times x and then minus a negative two. Okay, so now we can see here that's gonna be y plus five. Let's simplify this here to equal to a one half times an x plus two. Now you can go ahead and distribute that and then subtract the five. So therefore, you have a y is equal to a 1 half x plus 1 minus 5, which is going to equal to a 1 half x, let's see, minus 4. And then in this case, you could do the exact same thing, um, but now we're going to you know, plug in negative two for your slope. Now, another way you could do this is instead of using point slope form is actually use slope intercept form. So what you could do is say, all right, well, I know x and y, are going to negative two and negative five. And I know my um, M is going to be a negative two. The only thing I don't know is what the Y intercept is. So let me actually write this as a Y is equal to a one F X minus four. So what you could do is say, all right, Y is equal to a M X plus B, right? I have an X and Y and I have an M. I just don't have a B. So what you can do is plug in a negative five in for Y, a negative two in for M, a negative X, negative two in for X, and then plus b. So negative two times negative four is going to be a positive four. So negative five is equal to a positive four plus b, subtract to four, subtract to four, that's gonna be negative nine is equal to b. We already know what the slope is, which is a negative two. So y is equal to a negative two x minus nine. So there's two different ways to approach, um, two different ways to be able to approach this, that problem. Uh, have you ever had a student with ADD, ADHD in your math classes? If so, what are some tips or tricks you can give them to help them with studying? Um, I mean, I've had multiple students, you know, with ADHD. I think one of the, I think one of the things that I have found with students, um, that's, you know, have ADHD is like to keep things like in chunks. Um, don't try to overwhelm, don't try to do things, but try to be consistent, try to do things daily and, you know, try to work in like terms in like five or 10 minutes and, you know, and then take a break, do something else. Like your brain needs kind of at least in my opinion, that stimulation that of doing so. And like, cause this is like kind of coming from me as well. Like I can't just sit there and do math for like an hour, right? I need to like do it and then do something else. 
So, um, I, you know, I always tried to like organize my homework. So therefore it was something that students could take, um, in like chunks in that regard. And yeah, that's what I would kind of like, you know, recommend is, um, you know, break things up into, into, into chunks and like, kind of like time block, you know, when you're going to be doing your math homework, when you're going to be doing your, um, when you're going to be doing your studying and, um, you know, give yourself breaks and then come back to it and but be consistent. You know, I think a lot of times, sometimes when students had to focus, it was because they had to like, you know, cram, you know, and stuff like that. And obviously we don't want you to be able to do the cramming just so you can go ahead and focus. So, you know, try to set aside time that you can work and work on your math and try to be consistent with that. So hopefully that is helpful in any regard. Well, hey, Jack. And hi, teacher. Is this live or being recorded? This is live. Although I kind of went on to there, so it's kind of weird. There you go. Um, but yeah, it is live and being recorded. So anyways, um, for those of you that were kind of on in the earlier, hopefully you guys had a great time meeting Giselle and kind of hearing her story of... Um, you know, what she was able to do with kind of being a, being with tutoring, kind of with, um, on joining in on my tutoring, you know, we got to meet a couple of times, um, answer some of her questions, but in reality, it was really her that like, you know, did everything she needed to do to pass her exam. Right. You know, the tutor is just there, um, to kind of guide, to assist, to kind of coach, motivate you, um, in preparation. Right. So that's why I don't charge for my tutoring sessions. Like, um, I, I want to make sure that I can help students as best I can. Um, but obviously like, you know, offering free tutoring would just be a, um, you know, I would get, you know, I can't handle or I can't help everybody with math. Um, and even though I'd love to be able to help everybody with, you know, math and, you know, and a lot of people are willing to pay, you know, for my time or to be able to help, um, cause they understand my explanations from a video or, you know, whatever may be the case. But, um, I, I would love to kind of meet more people like Giselle, um, or maybe like yourself, but, uh, but yeah, the only thing I offer as far as instead of cost is, you know, if you're willing to kind of be recorded, um, and therefore it might show up as a YouTube video, it might not. Right. So, I mean, like our Giselle, me and Giselle, like we recorded, um, I think two or three of our sessions, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to use, you know, anything or if I want to, you know, not so much like recording the sessions and putting the whole session on there, but like edited version of it, taking clips from my session and really just kind of telling a story of how students can overcome like, you know, their struggles in math and show success. So, um, the, um, so yeah, that's, you know, that's why, um, the, um, so yeah, that's why I offer that. And awesome, Mira. That's good to hear you came in clutch. I love it. Um, yes, Jake, if you do have questions, go ahead and check out the description. Um, go ahead and check out the description down below or, and you can go and post your questions in there. Um, all right. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is it for this week. Hopefully you guys have a great week getting back into school, getting ready for um, the you know next couple semesters and to finish off the school year on a high note. I hope you guys have a great week and uh, I'll see you guys next Sunday. Cheers.